Welcome, everybody, to Midday Magazine for this Thursday, August 22nd, 2024. Have your host, James J. Mayloff, here. We're joined right now by our great friend, Jen McNelly, natural resource groundwater educator with UW-Madison Division of Extension. Jen, good to see you. Hey, James. Nice to be here today. Thanks so much for being here today and uh, hanging out with us. We appreciate you and all the gang over at Extension. And uh, uh, real quick, before we dive into the topic, that is one of the cooler water bottles I have seen. <laughs> that is awesome. Thank you so it's very, much. It's very important to stay hydrated, let alone looking cool while you're doing right? it. That's, that's pretty good. Right? Jen, uh, we're going to talk about phenology today. Yes. Uh, and I can't believe I actually said that word right. I, I, I pulled it off. So you points got there. it right on the first try. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's dive right in. What in the world is a phenology? Right. So people are probably asking. I've never heard of that word before. But I thought we would take a little little step away from water today and talk about something a little bit different. Um Probably, as most folks have noticed, if you've been out and about outside, you've, you're starting to notice the seasonal changes, right? A few different color leaves, the animals are starting to act a little bit different, or we're starting to see different things. Um, so I thought phenology would be kind of a cool topic to talk about today. Mm-hmm. So phenology really is the relationship between life cycles of plants and animals, um, mm. And environmental changes, especially Mm. when we're looking at temperature and weather and how those two things correlate to Mm. each other. Mm. Um, For most of us who live in the Midwest, we probably notice these phenological changes Mm. or the changes in seasons. Just Mm. something that we observe, even though you probably didn't know that there was a technical study of it. Yeah, you can actually give a name to it now. Absolutely. Hmm. So really, it's just noticing those changes that are happening with seasonal variations or temperature changes um, and really looking at the relationships between those two things. Is there an example we can give the audience, Jen? Oh, absolutely. There's multiple examples. Great one, leaves turning color. When is that happening, you know, Mm -hmm. um, during the year? Is it happening earlier or later? What month is that occurring in? Um, a big one for me in water resources is ice out. When mm. does the ice go mm. out on a lake or a body of water? When does it occur? Mm. Um, or maybe even something called lake turnover that mm. happens in a lake. So, hmm. What is lake turnover, if you don't so, mind? So in a lake, in most lakes, not in all lakes, but in most lakes, in the spring and the summer, or in the spring and the fall, we'll have something called lake turnover. And so typically in a lake, you might notice when you jump in, there's going to be warmer water at the surface, colder water down deep. Um, So temperature changes, and then there's also different levels of oxygen. In the fall and the spring, what happens is that lake, the water in it, actually turns over and everything mixes from top to bottom. And there's a period of time where it is uniform um, in temperature and oxygen all the way through. And then it'll uh, it'll start to separate um, again. But really important when we're managing our water resources to know when that happens. Because um, there's a lot of other things associated with it. I love learning. I love learning things like that. Thank you, Jed. Thank yeah, you so much. No- that's awesome. I, I appreciate that. I went a little off script there, but yeah, I appreciate no, that you roll with absolutely. it. You're just doing great. So where does phenology come from? So phenology is a pretty ancient thing. I mean, people have been noticing these relationships since probably the beginning of time. You know, uh, Japanese and Chinese culture started recording um, the Chinese blossom, or cherry blossoms and when they bloomed as early as the 18th century. Um, you know, Lots of different cultures and traditions have kind of proverbs or sayings that are related to phenology, such as April showers bring May flowers. Everybody's heard that one, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Really, the study of phenology didn't start to be kind of use that term until like the 1840s. Um, And that's when it really started to become an actual study. But if we look locally, one of the early phenologists um, was Aldo Leopold from Wisconsin wow. in How Sauk cool. County. <laughs> so, How cool is that? Yeah, right? Uh, and and, and uh, not only is that cool and brings it really home and close circle, yeah. but also kind of, I, I hope, reminds Wisconsinites and Midwesterners alone uh, how important these subjects are and our land is to us and, and yeah. taking care of it. And tied to, you know, everyday yes. life and what we do. So. Is phenology important, Jen? So... I don't, you know, most people start to notice these changes and you're like, you know, the flowers are always going to bloom. The birds are always going to migrate. Is it important that I know when that happens? Um, And for most people, it may not be. But for the bigger picture, phonology actually really is important for a few different reasons. 
One, if we can make these observations over time more and more frequently, we really start to notice those correlations between when things are happening um, in the natural world. And that can be important for us in the timing of different things, say planting different crops or managing different pests and noticing when they're emerging. Sometimes it's more important to have that actual on the ground evidence than, you know, an anticipated date. Right. Yeah. So the more observations that we can actually make, um, the better for us and more informed it can make, you know, people who are trying to manage for those type of things. We also start to see trends hmm. over time. You know, one of the things that we've talked about in the past is the change in climate. Yeah. That's a big one for phenology. Most mm-hmm. people have noticed, you know, our springs are starting to get a little bit earlier. Our mm-hmm. falls are starting to get a little bit later. And how does that affect the natural world yeah. um, and the things that are associated with mm. it? So really important when when it comes to something like like that. And then, believe it or not, it's also used for a lot of different things like determining allergies Mm -hmm. and allergen seasons. Mm -hmm. You know, not something that we would typically think about, um, but can be have an impact on a lot of people's lives. Um, Agriculture, of course, when they're planting crops and pest management. I mean, that's kind of a big one. Yeah, that was especially in this state in the Midwest with our ag industry. I I imagine this is a big topic for them. Absolutely. And most people probably don't know the name associated with it but are making these observations in their daily lives anyway. Mm-hmm. So, uh, And uh, certainly the management of natural resources. Uh, this is important for uh, people in the, that field and that Ab- world. Absolutely. You know, when we're talking about things like drought and fire risk, mm-hmm. phenology is associated with that. Um, you know... Looking at different types of uh, conservation, how what plants are there? Is there a year where we're not seeing as much of things? For mm-hmm. example, monarch butterflies. That's a great one. Yeah. You know, we've noticed declines in their populations. Does that have a phenological association with it um, or not? So, yeah. And, and if I can piggyback on this amazing list that you have here, uh, one ad, one other thing to add: it's cool. Like this is cool to learn about. This is cool right? to, and interesting that this happens and how long this has been happening. The history of this is fascinating. It's just really interesting, and it happens all around us. And nature is a, a never. Nature has doesn't have reruns. Right. Like, it's always exactly. something new. It's always something interesting. And uh, that that part of it is really cool too to be able to certainly. I, I actually think it it might we might have. Uh, Save time by talking about the industries that are not affected by phenology, <laughs> because it feels That's like true. Ev- feels like it touches everything in our lives. It really um, does. So being able to take a step back and appreciate it, see how cool this is in nature, how cool nature is in general, I think also will help you see how it applies to your day to day life or your field, your job, and how important it is that we not only uh, understand these things, but that we have individuals like yourself and other people out there really keeping an eye on these things. Yeah, and I think that's maybe one of the things that I geek out about this topic a little bit is that it is so accessible for anyone. You know, if somebody is like, well, well, how do I start or how do I participate in this? It is as simple as going for a walk and just noticing the things around you. You know, it doesn't take anything special mm-hmm. um, to to really participate. It's really just taking the time um, to stop yeah. and, and notice the world around you and, and how that's changing from day to day or from month to month. Um, you know, if people really want to get a little bit more serious about phenology, it's just recording those observations mm-hmm. and writing them down, which is, can be as simple as just using a notebook um, and taking the time to go out there and notice what you you see around you. Doesn't matter if you live in the city or in the country, things change no matter where you are. Yeah. <clears throat> so, well, with, uh, you know, we're speaking with Jen McNally, natural resource groundwater educator with UW Madison Division of Extension, and, and and Jen, one of the things that uh, occurs to me as we're talking about this too is, um, kind of coming back to the observance of our world, and, and uh, I'm uh, I've always been a, a really bad at stopping and being in the moment, you know, and, and and just taking a pause and breathing and appreciating the world around me. I, I get busy and I get focused, like oh, a lot absolutely. of people and stuff. 
one of the things that's really helped me later in life with this is uh, animals. Yeah. Like my fur brother, Sam. Yep. I'm running around like crazy. Sam's just sitting there and I see him as I'm going past and I got to stop and pet Sam. I got to stop. And and it, it gets me to be in the moment for a second and, right. and kind of stop and think about things and observe the world around me, especially when I'm taking them for a walk. And yeah. I see something like our geese flying south. Or, or, or something like that and something that we see all the time but it gives me a moment to like appreciate it and I just yep. see how beautiful it is check out the blue sky that's above me and uh, observe the world around me for a moment before I realize oh wow this is beautiful like I'm, I'm fortunate I get to live in this world in this city in this state and these things and can make us really there, there's never a, you can't appreciate things too much there's no side effect to this or anything right. it, it's one of the positives uh, that you can a- incorporate in your day but also understand the world around you a little bit better. Exactly. If you take the time to make these observations, you'll really start to notice, you know, when things are happening and how that's changing and and the differences in that, you know, taking the time to write down, you know, today I saw the geese migrate south. And that might be a whole month different from when you saw it last year. Um, a really cool tool for people to use too is uh, the Aldo Lido. Leopold Society Mm -hmm. has a phenological calendar that they put out each year. And so it's got rough dates for when these different natural events occur so that if you're not taking the time, but you look on your calendar and be like, oh, such and such flower is supposed Mm -hmm. to be out blooming. I should go look for that. Mm -hmm. So it works in reverse too. You know, not only you taking the time, but sometimes you need that physical reminder of like, oh, I should step out and, you know, see what's happening. Um, Today, if people are really, really interested in contributing to the larger body of science related to phenology and might be a little bit more tech savvy, um, there's actually apps that people use. Mm. Um, There is an app, I want to get the name right. Mm, mm. Um, There is an app called Nature's Notebook, which is put out by the U.S. National Phenology Network um, that you can download on your phone. And your observations actually go into a national database hmm. um, that's used by scientists all over hmm. the U.S. Um, and related to phonology. And hmm. so it doesn't just have to be in your big backyard. You can contribute to this larger body of science yourself as what we like to call a citizen scientist. Yeah. How cool is that? Right? Uh, that website sounded really awesome, too, that has the <laughs> calendar kind of of how this stuff. Yeah. That is, and that has got to be something that's uh, really uh, like uh, unique to me, but I imagine very helpful to you and others in the industry. Uh, that's that's really cool to hear. Absolutely, Jen. Uh, now we we've covered this a bit already and touched on it a little, but I'm, I'm just to go a little bit deeper into it. Phonology sounds really cool. It sounds like a really interesting thing. Sounds very good. But how does it? What does it have to do with uh, your everyday citizen? How does it ha- apply to them? Sure. So especially, you know, sometimes it can be a little bit harder for those of us who don't live in the Midwest, but for us who live in the Midwest, we have some pretty big changes that happen from season to season that that impact us. And phonology is really just taking the time to notice the correlation between when those things are happening. Um, and, and they can have an impact on our everyday life, like the things that we talked about with like the allergens mm-hmm. or our agriculture or fire and drought risk, um, which really do have an impact on all of us in some way. And it's really important to take note of that um, and when those things are happening and how they change um, over time, because it gives us a better idea of how that world is changing and how we should manage for it um, in the future. It's certainly, I mean, um, just just on the, the essence of we got one planet, Right. You know, I mean, if, if I could just go to that route real quick, because uh, <laughs> this is what we got, everybody. I haven't checked it out recently, but I have not seen a lot of apartments on the moon or Mars or no, anything like that. So much. The last I checked, there is no real estate over there. Uh, this is the world we got. And, and in order to take care of it and keep it around, not just for us, but younger generations and everything, this subject is also important, I would say, on that level. Oh, and absolutely. not necessarily that you, you take this information and you, you immediately start a, a a green fund or something like that. But um, as as I get older, I realize more and more that we're all conservationists. Yeah. And we're all on the same page on the same planet trying to keep this rock going and keep it moving and make it sure that it's around here for a long time. Understanding this stuff, sharing these things, whether it's in your own personal notebook or online, uh, can only help our scientists, our individuals like Jen and different people in these industries have more and more data and be able to understand the world that we're living 
living in and how it's adapt, how it's changing. changing. Again, nature has no reruns. Yeah. <laughs> you couldn't have said it any better, James. That was it, perfect. And and I think that one of the things too uh, that's cool uh, cool about this again is that we not only can we observe these things, but we can do something about it. That, that we can affect these things, that we I can know. make change, that we can. This isn't one of those things where, uh, oh, well, I guess we did what we could here, everybody. We had a good run. <laughs> uh, it was all right. No, no, not at all. In fact, the more we collect this data and the more we get it to you guys and, and scientists and yeah. different people that know, the, the, the stronger we are, not only as a, a world and as a people, but the stronger our planet can be. Um, that make no mistake about it. The planet's going to be here, whether we are or not is a yep. whole other story. Yeah, so exactly. keeping us around and, and thriving on this planet is just as integral as the planet itself. Right. This stuff, this is all data. It all helps with it. And again, it's really cool. It's really interesting to see this stuff all just happening around us. I was going to say, it's fun to, you know, it's an opportunity to take a pause, to notice that world around us, the beautiful state that we live in, um, and, and just really be cognizant of how, how that is changing and, you know, between the seasons and what's happening and, and really just appreciating it. I don't mean to uh, put you on the spot, Jen, but I'm curious because I, I, I gave you, you know, a little bit of what, how this is for me and the little bit that I've observed. I, I imagine for you and your world and, and the, 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 the brain that you got, which is amazing, <laughs> um, that you, you may see things, it's a little more common for you, but uh, you're probably even taken back by some of these changes and, and some of it, even for you when it's in your head all the re- already. Absolutely. I think, you know, even as somebody as a scientist who works in this world day to day, you know, we don't we get so wrapped up in what we're doing that we don't take enough time to stop and appreciate it. And, you know, I just want to say we're really grateful to the people who do take the time um, as scientists to to note these changes and to to input this information just because it can be so beneficial in helping us understand um, how that natural world works. You would think we would have this figured out. <laughs> no, not yeah. even close. No, 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 no. <laughs> so yeah, just to, being able to take the time um, and do that and step back. And it's always nice to come on and take the opportunity to talk about things like this because it renews my own interest in it and my own passion and being like, yep, you know what? I do. I need to take the time to go out and, but, and just appreciate. That's very cool. Jen, I was curious, uh, you guys at Extension, uh, you're some of our favorite guests. I'm, I'm curious, how are things going over, or how are, do you have any events coming up over there? Sure. So, yeah, we have a couple of them, especially one that relates really well to this kind of phenology topic. Mm-hmm. Um, October 5th, Saturday, October 5th, we're hosting the annual Science by the River yeah. event. This is a great chance for people to get outdoors mm-hmm. along the Wisconsin River, kind of notice the beauty and those, those changes that are mm-hmm. happening um, that we talked about but also a great way to experience some hands-on science there'll Mm -hmm. be lots of different community organizations and booths along the entire wisconsin river for families to come out and just get hands-on you know fun activities related to science so that's a great one we love that event uh i'll be wearing my shirt i gotta i gotta i I have one pink (laughs) shirt i own and that's the one that i love it so so make sure to mark that saturday october 5th on your calendars uh the other one that is probably relates really well to this topic too is coming up um saturday september 7th Mm -hmm. uh extension is hosting the clean sweep event um so you know if you have hazardous or chemicals or household products that you need to dispose of um that is a great place to do that free of charge Mm -hmm. uh so make sure to check that out as well. And we'll be certainly uh, highlighting both of those events uh, as we get closer to them here on our morning show and at midday here and our other shows. We'll be highlighting them, making sure that we get good turnouts for both of those events. Um, appreciate everybody involved with Clean Sweep. They do such great work about great. that and so many volunteers that help out with that one. And uh, uh, same thing with uh, Science by the River. We love that event. <laughs> it's only getting bigger and stronger every year. We're looking forward to that. That is our hope. Uh, Jen, we have talked about some really cool stuff today. If people have follow-up questions, want to know more about some of what we touched on, how can they get in touch with you? Sure. Extension is a great resource for a lot of different topics. So I always encourage people to check out the website. Uh, You know, the Wood County Extension Office has a great website full of lots of different information. So that's a great place. Um, Otherwise, you can always give us a call Mm -hmm. as well. Uh, Extension's website is extension.wisc.edu, extension.wisc.edu. 
be sure to bookmark that page. It's not just a great way to keep up to date on everything, but also a good way to reach out to them and follow up with follow-up questions and other things you might wonder and want to know. And be sure to follow them on social media as well. Not only is it a great way to keep up to date on things there, but you can share a lot of their events on your pages and you just never know who might see them that wouldn't otherwise. Right. Absolutely. Jen, uh, always fun hanging out with you. Looking forward to the next time already. Thank you so much for uh, being here today and uh, bringing this great topic to us. Well, thanks for the time, James. Say hi to the team over there for us. Will do. We'll have more Midday Magazine coming up for you right here at 97.5 FM, 1320 AM, WFHR. We are locally grown radio.